Hello, everyone. It's Donnell McAdams and Megan here. And uh, we are going to be showing you tonight the suspension system. If you didn't get to see that back when we launched that, it was on February the 14th. Um, you'll now get to see it. And if you were there, you remember this fabric that I showed. Um, we had an all day affair. I was on from like uh, 1130 or something like that. Maybe it was one o'clock. I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. But I use this panel. And so I want to show you some things um, that maybe you didn't see. And if so, we're going to use some other templates too. So you'll learn a bit about that. And no, there is no handout tonight. Um, the handout uh, would not really be necessary other than the fact that we have put some links in. So if there's something that you want, Megan is going to be dropping links into that. And uh, afterwards, we will put up those links on a handout. That would be the easiest. So if you don't get the links as we're putting them in, there will be a handout later. Megan's going to keep track of what we're using and we'll put those in. We had uh, kind of a little fast turnaround from a class we taught earlier today, and so we don't have the hand ready. So anyway, we are going to start on this panel. Now you'll notice that I have already done these designs right here. These are actually already printed on this panel, and I am going to show you how having that sus suspension system allows me to easily manipulate my panel. Now I've got it on here so that you can see this part of it, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn it and I'll be walking back behind for just a second to do that. But I wanted you to see how it allows me to move my um, fabric very easily. Now, what's that suspension created from? The suspension system, if you purchase it, you will have, and I'm kind of looking around here for my other one, but I don't see it. You will get four pieces and they are, no, oh, she says she knows where it's at. So right in front of your box is where I put it. Well, I'm talking about the big arm, Megan. Oh, I'm sorry. So the, the suspension system is four um, arms that attach either to your table um, or to your ex uh, extension table. I like to use it to my actual table. So I'm going to loosen up the, the screen here so you can see right over there, that piece that's blue, it doesn't have one on it right now. You can see that arm that goes up. That's a flexible arm. And then there's one up here. do is you wrap your fabric around one of these little fabric rollers and then stick it in there. Now you'll notice I've got mine uh, kind of folded over a little bit. That's a way that you can actually keep your quilt, the space that you want to work on, very, very manageable. So I'm going to put this back in this space right here and I'm going to go back and you'll be seeing the, um, the movements that I make because I'm going to turn this uh, quilt so that it is going in another direction. So just hang on a second. So I'm gonna loosen this one right here and it's gonna move this way.
So if we had a even larger quilt than this, I think this is 60 by 60. If we had a larger quilt than this, you would even turn that over farther and then start to roll just the edge that you have. I wanted to get down to this area and be able to pull in so I could do this section right here. Well, as you notice, I don't have a ruler foot on here yet, so I guess that would be a good idea. The thing that jumped out at me when this panel came into the store was that these are already marked with eight. So all I had to do was set that on there. This one is marked here. The inside is eight, but outside here, yeah, the outside is just four, which is fine. And so for that reason, it to me looked like, oh, I just need to use all different types of circular templates and use them on this particular fabric. Now I got to see here. Yes, I use the same thread on the bobbin. So this is a variegated thread that I'm using that everybody always wants to know. This one happens to be a Wonderfill thread. It's called Silco, S-I-L-C-O. And the color is a variegated color. It's a SCM-11. And it doesn't really say on here what the weight of that thread is. It's acting like a 40 weight. So I'm gonna assume that's what it is. And it's a very nice thread for this particular panel. Now, Megan's gonna put the link in there and we'll be sure to put the link in the handout for that panel if you're interested in the panel. Some of you may have already gotten it. Um, but it's a fun, bright panel to play around with your templates. And yes, I do plan to do some stuff in that open space. I don't know if I'll get time tonight to do that, but we'll see. I am gonna show you a border. A little hint, whenever you're winding your bobbin, you want to wind it with a medium speed. You don't want to do something that's gonna be a real fast speed so that you uh, stretch your thread. And believe it or not, thread can stretch quite a bit. Now I'm trying to, to give a lot of little hints as I go through things. And one of the things that I uh, mentioned on one of the classes this week, and I'm sorry, I don't know which one it was, was the fact that batting has a right side and a wrong side. And you want to do your best to keep the right side up and the wrong side down. I shouldn't say about right and wrong, I should say front and back, okay? And how do you know the difference? Well, when you take just your layer of batting and take a sharp straight pin and you go through it, from the front, it will go through very easily. But from the back, there'll be a little bit of resistance. So when you go to go through it, it'll kind of, watch that, it'll kind of dimple down because it doesn't want to go through that. So that's how you know the right from the wrong side. The one the needle goes through easier, the straight pen in this case, is going to be the one that is the top side of your batting. All right, we have a question. Um was this a, or will this be a class with this panel and everything you've done? No, it will not. 
Not to my knowledge. Was it ever a class? No. Okay. It was a demonstration that I did on the 14th. Okay, something feels like it's hanging up on my thread and I got to see what that is. And yes, there it is. If it's hanging up when I'm trying to pull right through, it's not going to get any easier. There we go. All right. So let's go first to this design right here. Now, I know you're supposed to go from the out or from the middle to the outside. This has been quilted. This one has, I guess I can go to this one first. So we're going to go ahead and get our crosshair square. The one with eight. There we go. And I'm going to put that on there just like this so that these lines line up with these that are already printed on here. And then I'm just going to take one of my markers because yes, I have already sprayed this with some sort of a starch, whether that's, I like starch savvy the best, but you can use um, best press or you can use like faultless iron starch that you get at Walmart or the grocery store. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a template that I'm going to use right on those lines there. So let's see which one I need. I'm saving one for this great big one over here. So let me get into my pile. I've got to do one that's about nine and a half. I know that this one's 11 and a half. And if I measure this from side to side, it's about eight, about eight and a half. So maybe I want to use even one that's a little bit smaller. So I've got one here that's seven and a half. So that's what I'm going to pull out. And whether you know it or not, Spinifex 4 that you get in your sampler set has relatives, okay? So the one that is seven and a half is the one I'm going to use, and that's this one right here. But I also have the nine and a half, and I have the 11 and a half, which you can see how big that is. So if you've been using your Spinifex 4 and you really, really like it, it is not repeated in this set because the Spinifex 4 is 4 inches, I think, if I'm right. I'm not sure. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's 3.5. But anyway, this is your Spinifex, and you can see all the fun things you can do with that. You've probably done this a bunch of times with your Spinifex 4. You can also have fun playing with it like this. So I'm going to do this design right here, where the four that are on the plus sign are going to be points out, and the four that are on the diagonal are going to be points in. So let's see what we've got here. I'm going to come right to the center. And you can see how easily that moves because I have my quilt on the suspension system. Get a hold of that thread. Remember, I'm using a variegated. It's got several colors of yellow and orange down into the rust and red. And since I've got that on there, I'm going to need to open my gate. And while I've got this here, I need to put a piece of my tape on it so I don't lose that because that scotch tape pretty much causes all kinds of issues. I need to have a cleaning day here and put things away. 
things are falling all over the place. Okay, so um, since we don't have the handout, I just dropped the link um, for that SpinFX 4 set of templates. And like I said, we'll do we'll get a handout quickly for you right after class. So I think I said I was doing the points out. So that's what I'm going to do. Now right here is my line that I need to line up on the line that goes that way to keep this good and straight. So here we go. Now, if I didn't have that on that suspension system, I would have all kinds of drag on my quilt. But because I've got this hooked onto my suspension system, it's just following me. So I'm keeping that down, going back to this here. Lining that up. So Barbara has a question. She has only a simple singer talent. They have no speed control or kneel down. Can she still be successful with using these templates? Absolutely. And what you probably want to do, because you're already accustomed to turning that hand wheel, and you just want to remember that when you turn that hand wheel, you turn it so that it's towards you, never away from you. And So Steady has a foot control um, attachment that you can get to make it so that you can get that speed. So this is what it looks like. It's called Precise Pedal Power. And this piece is an acrylic piece that hooks onto your foot control, and then you adjust this so that when you put your foot down, it won't go completely down. So that's called Precise Pedal Power. It is a So Steady product, and that's, I guess I've got one hooked right here. I might as well show you exactly what it is. This is my foot control. This is that piece, and this is adjustable. Now, when you get it to the height you want it, you're going to tighten this part of it so it doesn't go anymore. And so now when I press this down to the floor, that's all the farther that it will go. So that is an adjustment or a, a piece that you can put on there so that you can get the speed that you need to be able to control your machine so that you can get those good stitches. I've actually taught people to use these templates that were working on featherweights. So I know it'll work on your machine. So Marlene would like to know, do you need to starch the fabric before using the chalk? Not the chalk. The chalk is fine. It will iron off. You don't need to starch the fabric before the chalk. Now that's the pounce iron off chalk, okay? That's using the pounce iron off chalk. Now I'm going to switch this and I'm going to line this up with this line right here. So this time I have my rounded edges out. You'll notice that each time I'm conscious of where my threads are. So I want to keep those out of my way so I don't stitch them in somewhere that I can't uh, get them out. Usually I can get them pulled out from underneath a stitch with a seam ripper, but if I don't have to, that's even better. So it sounds like we've got some people that have never joined us before. Well, great. You've landed in the right spot. We're a bunch of fun people and we love to share information. So I'm going to tell you if this is your first time with us, it would be good for you to go on to So Steady's Facebook page and search back to March 18th of 2020. That's going to be your get started information. It's going to talk to you about our tools. It's going to tell you, I didn't even mention 
I've got a glider on here. You can see this green piece. This is on top of my so steady table because we need a flat surface. And that's why this is so easy to move. Now, once I'm back here to this point, I'm gonna take my template out. This is a gate that allows me to remove that. And I just wanna check and see that I have all of mine done. So I have quilted that in there so that I have, um, you know, made my design. But what I'm going to do is on this design here, I'm going to show you how to embellish. So these four are going to get embellished. So I'm going to turn this back or put this back on. And I'm going to turn this around this way. I'm going to line that up and line it up here. Now, I could have done this as I was doing it but I wanted you to see the design simple before I actually embellish. So I'm gonna take this edge of the acrylic right here and I'm gonna move it in until it touches that line that I've already stitched. Now it's not touching down there, but that's okay. I just need for it to touch somewhere to keep this um, consistent. And so now I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna come back to the center I'm going to move it into that and do the same thing. Don't come up quite as far. And I'm going to come in one more time. So each time I moved in and I just didn't come up quite as far. So I have embellished that one. I want to go over here and do this one. So I'm going to just kind of turn my, my fabric a little bit. You can kind of see how this is like bouncy, bouncy which is fine, it's what I need. And I need to keep this lined up, that line right there with my needle, pull this in. And now we're gonna do this side. And you may be wondering, well, how do you know where to stop? Well, I don't care where it's at. I'm going up about three quarters of the way and then half and then one fourth and back down. You know, if the quilt police are out measuring all of this, they need to get something better to do. So I'm going to line up here again, pull this one in. Uh-oh. Looks like my top thread broke. Okay. Answer all the questions on the machine. And we will re-thread. Now, I will tell you, that in this situation, when I rethread, I am not going to have to do a whole lot of whatever because of the fact that there's a whole lot going on here already. So if I just pull my thread up and get a hold of it and then just kind of make a couple of stitches, I'll be good because that's already super, super saturated with stitches. So it's not like there's only one hole there and I have to worry about it. So I'm not going to do anything more than just pull that bobbin thread up again. And get that out of my way. needle back down it happens to all of us stopping there pulling it into the next spot now if i have counted correctly. I've just got one more over here to do. So I'm going to line this up and got that right beside that one. So Jan wants to know what makes the top thread break? Who does it on climate too, as well? Well, it just happens. If it's happening a lot, it means you need a new needle. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, take this off. 
I'm going to pull my needle up. Sometimes it's because your it breaks because your thread on your spool is doing some uh, jumping around. You may need what's called a, um, oh, I can't even think of the name now, but it's like a little stocking that fits over a thread net. There we go. You might need a thread net on your actual thread so that it doesn't jump around on the spool. So this case, this is my needle thread there that I just broke. I'm getting that out of the way and I've got all of these threads right here to do something with. Now that's going to make a pretty darn big knot if I use all of them at the same time. So I'm just going to take half of these and make two different knots. So there's two makes three over here. So I've got three and three, because remember I had my little issue in the center. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I flip this around and I'm tying that knot and I'm gonna hold this right here. And I'm gonna put my needle right down through that loop to the fabric and pull that down onto the surface. I'm then just taking those threads and putting them in that self-threading needle and I'm going to bury them where I can get them underneath my fabric, not to the back because I want to just go in batting. And I'm going to pull that through and out of the way. So there are those threads. Pull that knot through and then cut this off. Now, if you've never seen that done before, I do have a short video on, it's called Template Quilting with Donnell McAdams. And it will show you how to do that on a plain piece of fabric so you don't have all of this um, extra color in there to distract when you're trying to watch it. So that's on my YouTube page. Everybody wonders why I take the time to do this. It's like, can't you move on? Yeah, I can, but then I've got all of this at the end to deal with. Well, that one pulled through and broke right off. So there we go. I would recommend, this feels like a cotton thread. I would recommend that you use a polyester thread when you're first starting because it's very much forgiving and uh, works with you very easily. But there's that design on that particular part over there. Now, while we're here, I'm just going to do a design right out here in this edge. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do circles on quilts. So hang on a second. I'm going to get my templates. And this is one that's really a lot of fun in the fact that I'm just going to see what about the middle of my space is. And I'm going to use my thumbtack right there. I put my thumbtack in tape so that I don't have to stick it through my quilt. I'm sorry, Megan, I added a template. You did, and I had it all ready to go. Right. So. Anyway, this is not one that you need to have I'm seeing if it all fit in there. This is not one that you need to have stable tape on your templates because we are going to be moving this and this is our, our circular point right there. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to pull this down. You can see how I can just kind of flatten that. This is in place. And I'm going to come right over here. And I'm going to put my needle down right in that seam line of my border. And I'm going to pull the thread up there. Well, everything's letting me know. Just put it right on the edge because I was getting to where I needed to move it anyway. You can just leave it down. So I'm right here in the corner. Those go together. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this back. And I like to stitch from the open end of this template to the closed end, because that way I don't sew past the edge and so to speak, fall off. Now this opening is a little larger. Let's get you where you can see this. This opening is a little larger than the actual foot. So, there we go. You probably felt like, felt like you fell off of a roller coaster there. You just had your own little bungee jump. So I need to pick a side. I always sew on the inside. So I'm going to push my foot right along the inside. I didn't like the sound of that, but we're going to continue on to see what happens. Nope. Fortunately, nothing is tied off. We'll be getting that out pretty easy. Now, some of you may wonder, okay, what about this orange coming from the bottom? Well, I've already adjusted my tension, and you have to remember that I'm using the same thread on the bottom, but it doesn't mean that when I'm using the yellow on the top, the yellow is going to be on the bottom. So my orange is kind of showing there. I hope that won't happen when I get this out because it sounds like my thread was just a little bit tight there. And I don't like to make mistakes in front of you, but I also know that this allows you then to know what to do when it happens to you. So you can see that right there, that was all the orange thread for sure. I'm going to give it one more chance and then I'll just have to find something else. You guys probably never talk to your thread or your machine like that, but sometimes you just got to let it know who's boss. There we go. All right, no harm, no foul. Coming back over here. I am using the size 90 top stitch on this machine. That's a purple tip needle from Janome. This will be worth the wait, you guys, I promise. See how my foot's a little bit loose there? 
I'm going to get that screwdriver and tighten that up before I go any further. It's a good idea to get yourself a longer screwdriver so you can get a little bit better grip on that tightening up. Now I can see where I was before. So I'm going to come right in there and put that needle down. Bring up my thread. All right, so some of you are looking. I did pin all of the links to everything that Donnell is using tonight. I think you said you're going to try and copy that and put it into us. Um, I will put it onto a handout, yes. But the thing I want you to know is I may not get to all of what she's put on there, especially if things like that keep happening. There we go. And I did you're currently using because there were so many of them, but I did put the shopping link that they can go to as well for that. So this is spinning right around on that pen and I'm pushing to the inside. And I want to stop when I get right to that seam allowance or right to that joint. So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to pick a smaller size of template. I could go to just one of these here. In fact, I think I will for this one, but I need to stitch in the ditch so that I can get to the spot I need to be. Now, I'm just going to show you, you don't have to go get in different templates. This has got a straight edge right here. I just need to get my spacing gauge and I'm going to be going in reverse. So I have to trust what's happening here to stay right in that line. So here we go slowly against that. And I'm going to flip my template over, put it back on there. And we're now in this spot right here. It feels like I need to go like one more stitch. There we go. And now I'm going to go back. And I'm pushing against that side there. So Megan, I'm going to need the one that says six and a half. Actually, seven and a half. So the templates come as a set of four. The big ones aren't yet. There you go. And you have that because like the other one was my even numbers. This is my odd numbers with the half inch. So since I want to put one that's only a quarter of an inch away from this eight inches, I need this seven and a half because it's a half inch on each side of your center spot. So I'm going to put a line in here a quarter of an inch away. So this is a one that I can flip either way. I'm going to be using this one right here. So I only need to come like three stitches, but I'm still going to use a straight edge because I just am not good without it. So I'm only coming just a little bit. And I think that's probably going to be enough. Actually, it was too much. There we go. So you can see that's only a quarter of an inch away from that other one.
And I'm not even having to think about, oh my gosh, this is a huge quilt. You know, it's not huge, but it's 60 by 60 and or something somewhere in that. But I'm still able to easily manipulate this. Now, if I wanted another one a quarter inch from there, I would just move up to this spot right here. I'm going to go ahead and leave that one out there like it is. And I'm going to stitch now a five and a half. Get this lined up so that I'm right in that ditch. And you can see I'm right in the ditch there. I went just a little bit too far, so let's come back. And that's why I usually use the straight edge, because I came back and I was kind of got a stitch out in the area that I didn't want. But life goes on. You can see it's a little yellow stitch right there. Again, I'm pushing against this inside. So I'm going to stop right in that. And now I want the one that says five, Megan. I'm going to use my measure here. Come just a little bit. Okay. Looks like I got it. And now I need the four. So again, I'm going to measure. Decide I'm going to use the two. This will probably be a little tiny. Oh, shoot. Well, it happened again. So usually people ask at this point, and I can't read the questions all that's going on, but usually at this point, it's like, so what do you do when that happens there? Okay, what I'm doing is I am picking this out, and I'm actually going to pick it out clear back to here for two reasons. This isn't in the right place. It's supposed to be in the ditch, but I need that long of a thread to be able to tie this off. Otherwise, I'm not going to have enough thread to actually make a loop and secure it. So it's just easier if I do this. Now, I will not be surprised if this breaks and I have to um, just like stitch in the ditch over itself. We'll see because sometimes that does happen. And uh, by now, I'm kind of committed to the fact that even though this didn't say it, I think this must be cotton thread because it's sure giving me a fit tonight. And I'm just gonna write where I'm at right now. I'm gonna put my cutter. So that'll cut the bottom thread. The top thread's not even in the needle, but that will cut my bottom thread. So now I can actually get a hold of that and pull that one through also. 
So like right there, if that's long enough, I could tie that off there. I'm going to go ahead and pull a few more stitches out if I can get to them because they are small. I guess it's not going to come. So that's going to be where we're going to tie off right there. So that's where I'll start my stitching. And it's surprising because sometimes this is what you end up having to do. Um, you end up manipulating your design in a different way just because, oh, a mistake happened or something happened that you didn't expect to happen. And if it does, it just kind of causes you to be creative. So here's what I'm going to do with this. I am going to pull up my bobbin thread because remember I cut it. And there it is. So they're all on the top now. And I'm just gonna get right in that little ditch and I'm gonna stitch back this way and back the other way. So now that I've got that stitched over there, couldn't find my straight edge, it's right here. I'm going to get in the ditch and get down to where I was. So these threads now, because I stitched back and forth, I don't even have to bury them if I don't want to. I'm just gonna cut them right off because they've been stitched over, essentially a back stitch, so to speak. We don't usually call it that when we're doing this, but. So Nicole asked the question, do you always audition your designs on paper with the stitching disc before sewing on your quilts? A lot of times I do. On this one, no. I was just planning to work with what I already had as far as the fact that these designs were pretty much designed for eight point. There is one on here that isn't. And I'll be doing something different on it. Not sure why they did one at a seven, but they did. Okay, now I think this is too big of a space here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and put one right in this space around there. So we're going to take this in the ditch get our spacing gauge now those of you that are free motioners you could obviously do some free motion in some of these tracks if you wanted to so I'm going to come right there, and that's where we're going to end. Bring my thread up. It's already coming up. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's already coming up here. So I'm just going to pull it up without moving that away. And I'll cut it right there. So my needle thread just needs to be cut. And now I'm going to secure these threads. So I'm going to show you a couple more templates and then I want to do my border because that's really an easy thing to do. And it's one of those things that people always get all worried about. And the one I'm gonna show you tonight is so super simple. So we can take this off and there we have our fill in that particular place there. These can all go back together. 
And now, Megan, you pick out a template. Which spin effects you want to do? It's going to be. It's going to be one that is only about seven, maybe a six and a half. So. Okay, this will be a five and a half. The one I'm going to do is Spin Effects 15. This is the design that it makes. And I'm going to use, let me see here how far it's going to come out if it's a seven and a half. Oh, it'll be fine at seven and a half. So this is a new set. So I have not used this one yet. So I need to put some stable tape. So those of you that have not worked with templates before, stable tape comes with each of the templates, but you're gonna be the one putting it on. And I just have a bag here that has some stable tape in it. And I'm gonna use this, this design has a pinhole in it right here. I'm not going to use it with the pinhole. Let me see the front of that package again. I make decisions on the fly, so maybe I am. Nope, I'm not. So I'm going to put this on each of the corners. You'll notice that some of mine had it in other places. But wherever you're going to be putting some pressure when you're working with your template, that's where you want it to go. So before you get started on this one, that um, circle design that you just did, the half circle, Peggy wants to know on all the spaces that would be like that white emptiness, would you do that same design in all of those on this quilt? I'm not sure what I mean. It, so you've got this negative space right there, right? Yeah. If you've got that negative space on other spots in this quarter, oh, okay. Same yeah, circle. you could, because like right down here, it would be a quarter circle. Okay, you wouldn't be doing the whole thing. I probably will do different things just because of the fact that I like to have it so that when I show it, I can show different templates on one particular project. But it would be totally up to you what you wanted to do. So that one's not showing very well. Let me get another one here. So what I've done is I've put that in the center. I've lined it up with the top of the, each of these flowers, which honestly, I don't think I need to do any of those lines. I can just line it up with the top each time. So we're going to give it a shot. So I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to come in here. You could even change your threads if you wanted to. It would sound kind of crazy. I've done most all of this already with this thread. I'm not going to change now. But I might want to. After all, it's been acting up. But we're going to stick it out. I have a question from Barbara about feed dogs. Can I ask it now? Yes, ma'am. All right. She can't drop her feed dogs on her machine, but she's got a plate to drop in to cover them. Well, she, if she does that, can she still use these templates? Yes. And if you did that, what you want to make sure that you get, instead of the grid glider, you want to get this glider that's called the ruler work glider. It looks like this. Because your plate will be underneath there and this will sit up on your plate and so your templates will just slide right over all of that. If you use the one I'm using right now, it has a big opening and your templates would get caught on that piece you're putting over. So yes, you can do it and you wanna make sure that that's the grid glider or the glider, not the, it's the free motion glider. It's the one that has just that hole in it. One more question. Patricia has the crosshair rulers, but hers has a black frame. Is that supposed to come off? No. I think they're different. Some have frames and some don't have frames. I think the newer ones don't have the frames, but the frames actually make them stronger.
look how that comes right out to the tip of this working just great if any of you are interested in the panel i do have it on my website And that's at sobizmarion.com. Don't forget the Marion. There are two Sobizes. I guess that's the way you want to say it. I'm Sobiz Marion, M A R I O N. Now I'm going to stop here and pull this up so you can see how this is meeting here and joining. And it looks nice just like it is, but I'm going to go ahead and do the other eight. I could do it like this. And out here, this would make this come to a point like that is there. So that would look good too. What do you think, Megan? Should I switch it up or should I do it all the other way? Okay. I would do it all the same. Yeah, I think I am going to do it because it's a pretty design either way, but... Also like this it's kind of like a sampler quilt like when you do a sampler quilt you're first starting you're just going all the different pieces and different this is kind of like a sampler quilt for your design right and the thing is this is such a bright you know got a lot of bright colors in it and this is a great one for you to you know some people call panel quilts cheaters well i don't think they're cheaters i think it's just allowing you to be creative but this is one where you've got something on it already and you can use that to be creative so it allows you to practice with your templates kelly wants to know are you going to teach us so orchid this year not to my knowledge but you can ask them to get with me if you want so you can see here how this has all been on each of these green. Okay, so that's all finished up in there. I'm going to go ahead and I haven't put pink tape on this, so I'm just going to go ahead and raise my needle, pull this back, pull that thread up, come back to the center and put that needle down and pull up again. And then I'm going to just cut the one that's still pulling, cut my needle thread, and then I can take this off. You can put that back in that package. Now this is one where I did get my thread caught underneath right here. You can see they're clear up to here. So that's when I get right down in here and do a little bit of a surgery almost okay i don't want to break those threads but i don't want to leave them where they're at and while i'm talking it broke well that's the way it goes that one broke so and this one's going to too because it's split but at least they're caught in there in this center thing so that's not going to be an issue but the one thing I was going to mention while I was talking about that is the fact that if you don't have good lighting, that is something that you need to get. I have a light bar above me. It is a daylight light, and it's actually like an architect's uh, light. And I was never going to be one of those that needed all that extra light. But guess what? Age happens. And... It just makes it so much easier to have good lighting. And the other thing is, I'll say, is a good seat that allows you to sit up higher. I sit high when I'm doing template quilting because that allows me to look down on my project and see better, line things up easier, and it just makes it so much more fun and more comfortable. You should be sitting so that when you have your hands on your table, your so steady table, your machine bed, that's the table I'm talking about, that your elbows are 90 degrees, 
Okay, so your elbow is going to look like that. It shouldn't be so that your hands are up higher and it shouldn't be that you're sitting down so low that you are so uh, you shouldn't be sitting so high that you're, you know, kind of got more pressure than you actually need. So that's just a little idea a way you can do that. Now, let me tell you this too. This line right here, I've already starched this fabric. I know this is going to press out. But if it doesn't, all you need to do is spray a little more of your best press or your starch savvy or even just water on it. Let it saturate a little bit and then press it dry and you won't have any problems with it. Now, I want to do one more thing to this particular design. And I can see what my problem is right there. My thread is wrapped around the thread guide. Yeah, that's why that happened. So you don't get a second chance here. I'm still going to use this thread. See what's happened? It got wrapped around the thread guide and it's actually knotted itself up. So every now and then take a check and see what's going on that way. So let's try another one here. What was I talking about, Megan? Getting the lines out and then that I was going to do something different. I'm sorry. I don't remember. She wasn't listening, you guys. What am I going to do? Okay, we'll try this again. She's looking for a cat. No, I took a her Oh. Okay, let me get this rethreaded and maybe I'll think of what I was talking about. Uh, Jean wants to know where she can get the light bar. Guess where, Megan? On my website. Okay, I'll get the link for you, Jean. All right. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you something you could do, but I'm not going to do it on. Yeah, I can. I'm going to use my four inch arc that comes with my sampler set. And I'm going to connect these. So if you've never used your four inch arc, a lot of people wonder why it's even in there. I use it all of the time. But you know, you, you've got to know where to use it and how to use it. So that's what it looks like. It's a little four inch arc. And I'm going to go ahead because this is the outside of the design and I'm going to do it right at the point. You could measure out a half inch and then come from there to a half inch from here and then across. So you wouldn't have to have it right at that point. But I'm going to do it right at the point because that design is actually finishing right there. So let's get this up and get this pulled back. Put that back down, needle back in that point. So what I'm going to do here, can you see these lines on this little guy? Right there, that line that's straight. This arc is the same all the way around. But it makes it easier if you put that line, like I'm lining it up here. So I need to push this out so it touches my foot. And then I need to get my spacing gauge. And it ha you're not going to use it like this. You're going to use it at the angle because you have to have the flat against the flat. Now, when I'm showing it, I always do that, but this is the way you're actually using a spacing gauge. So I've got it matched against my foot. I've got it matched here so that when I come out around here and come to that point, I'm right in the spot I need to be. So I'm gonna turn this a little bit. I'm gonna match this up here. This is not going to be in a point right now. I mean, I, I, it, I, it can't be because it won't go down there. But I need to keep it going to that direction. And I've got my quarter of an inch there. So I come around here. The inside of this arc makes the same shape. 
So if for some reason it was easier to stitch on the inside, you could. So if I wanted to stitch from here to here, I can do that. It's just a little bit, um, you don't have a whole lot of space. But I just want you to see that it will do the same thing. It looks just like that one. Now, because I've got variegated thread, you might not be able to see all of it. So I'm coming down here, allowing that quarter of an inch. Boy, my arc's almost not long enough. You gotta remember where to stop. And now it's gonna be easier for me to do it this way. Uh-oh, it's gonna go over that right there. Not a good thing. So we are going to figure out what to do about that. Maybe it won't go over it. Let's see what happens. Oh, it did a little bit. Life goes on. Don't sweat the small stuff. We got one section here. I think it'll be easiest to go this way. All right, so you can see how I was able to kind of frame that up, make it just a little bit larger um, just by doing that with that four inch arc. Pull her away, come back, needle down, needle up. That thread right there is my bobbin thread. I just reach under and pull it out of the way. Hold the loop so it doesn't get away from you. And I like that knot to be like an eighth of an inch away from where the surface of the fabric is because otherwise it won't get hidden. And I'm going in between the layers of my backing my batting in the top. I don't want it to just come out on the back. There we go. Sometimes you just have to kind of support that so that it doesn't pull off. Like a while ago when I pulled it, it pulled right off. I cinch it up and cut that off and that goes back in there. This goes back in my sampler set. So let's do one more and then I'm going to do a border. How about we do this big one over here? Yeah, this is going to be fun. Let's make sure we got eight. Yep. And so I really don't need to mark it with the lines because I can go off of these green. That's going to be my line. So let's pull that thread up. Put that right dead center in the middle there. And the one I'm going to use is my 11 um, and a half inch. I don't know if Megan got this one or not, but this is my uh, curly Q. So this fits right around there. We're going to bring it in here and I'm going to decide how I'm going to do this because I have a line out the top here. I'll pull it up so you can see it. There's a line out the top here, and I also have a line this way. I think I'm going to use the line this way as my center. Okay, so that's going to put it over here. So when I do this, I don't doing the whole thing and coming back around. Is that ever cute on this one? Oh my gosh, I love it. 
it puts that right in the center there. Now what I can do is take it out, flip it completely over, and I'll come over and I'll put that same line dead center, and that's gonna center this guy up. Now, just realized I didn't put stable tape on both sides. So trust me, everyone, I'm hanging on for dead dear life right there because that's what happens. See how it's moved? I'm not taking it out, but it moved there. So what I need to do is take this and get some stable tape. So you always want to have something around so that you can put your stable tape on your templates. And these are only little half inch pieces of tape. And it, you know, it's a dependent. I put it on both sides of that opening so that I can hold that so it doesn't uh, shift when I'm stitching. And it's always fun when you're stitching and you then realize, oh, I'm already stitching and I have no stable tape. All right. Now I'm wondering what this would look like if I did another one. Like, well, that would be the same side coming around and going over that. So I don't think I want that. Let's just do what we're doing for now so that we can turn this going this way. This would be one, whoever asked, do you always audition? This would be one that would probably have been a good idea to draw it out. So much easier with stable tape. I'm gonna take this out turn it around, go to the next one here. And my center line Yeah, cuz this is right down the center of this one, but this is the center of that. So I can use that. Turn it over and center it right on top of the next one there. Take it out and turn it over. For those of you that have been with us for a while, these used to have gates. And now they've figured out that they don't always have to have the gate in there because this one we're not stitching beside that. So we really don't need that gate because I'm following the other side. Get a newer template that doesn't have a gate and yours does. It could yeah, newer. you don't have a gate on this one, the newer ones. Because I know you showed one another time and somebody said, well, mine doesn't have that. This is actually much easier. So here's my straight line right there. I'm putting that straight out of this, but that also makes that diagonal line right in the big flower. I got threads here I don't want to get caught, so. That is just a fabric that I had that was a bunch of different, well, that was a 
fat quarter bundle. And it's just one that I had, so I can't really tell you about that one. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to decide, I think I want something else in this. What's that going to be? So at this point, I think I want something in between here. So let me see what I've got here to do. I think what I'm going to put in there is one of my ovals. I think that would create a neat little design. So let's see which one I'm going to use. I think I'll use the large one. So this one does have a gate. So ignore all my little ruler stickers because you don't need them for this. And let me see what I can do about this thread that got caught. So Paul's got a question. He says, I thought going back with a variegated thread was not supposed to be done. Well, you, you don't, I mean, how do I say this? You can do whatever you want to do. It does change your colors just a little bit. I don't think mine looks bad, so I'm certainly not going to worry about it. But yes, that's kind of a, a rule that most people tend to say is the way it is, that you don't want to go back over it. But Oh, no, you can do whatever you want. So now I'm going to move over here, and each time I'm just lining up my line in the center of that little daisy flower. Anytime I can do something without having to make a bunch of marks on my, you know, with the marker and whatever, that makes it even faster and easier. And you can see with this, uh-oh, it found my thread. So we got the center and the center. This is one case where I know there's been, it's been stitched over a bunch of times. So it is now history because it's been stitched over so many times. I have just cut those off. This is creating a really neat design here on the inside. So I have to turn my machine off. I'm going to take my template out of the way. And this is all hooked in here. Now, you know I can't plan these kind of things, but this does give me the opportunity to show you one of my best friends. And this is when I'm embroidering or when I'm doing any kind of sewing. It's called the Thread Nest Tool Set. 
It consists of two weapons, I mean two tools, one being a hook. This is the way you will use it, with the hook going to the right. And I'm going to go underneath. I'm going to hook underneath that thread nest, and I'm going to lift up like that. And with this other tool, this is super sharp. I will just lay it on the bed of my machine and slice the threads. So rather than having something that's awful, you can see right now, I'm going to get the light on so you can see. I'm going to lift up. So that's lifted up. So before you know how it's kind of feels like it's hooked down inside everything. And I'm just simply reaching underneath there with the other and slicing the threads and just that easy this is all undone. And so if you have done embroideries where you've had this happen or you've seen what I had happen here, several of you may have seen this before because it's happened to me, but not very often. So now what I'm gonna need to do is look underneath here. There's where it happened. So it's not a huge mess or anything. That was just the thread that got caught there. By the way, is that looking super cute or what? That design, I'm loving. Let me see if I can pull this back here. You can see it much better on the back. So you can see what that's looking like. So I'm going to take this back because down here is where, oh, well, you know, the mess happened. So I'm going to take this and you can see many of you are familiar with that. Man, it did a number on that thread. Get any extras that are down in there out. So just to test it, to make sure everything is okay. I'm gonna get a scrap of fabric here. And I have to remember how I had it set before. And I'm just going to give it a test here. Because see what happened? It, something is still not right with this. So let's do a little diagnosing. It appears that it had jumped out of the take-up lever also. There we go. So I'm gonna set this back under here and just without it threaded, cut my bobbin thread. And I'll finish that other design later. I'm going to take you straight to the border now because we're getting low on time. There we go. See how many more I had to finish. If it's only a couple, we'll finish it. It's still hooked into my suspension system. Looks like we only have two to do, you guys. So we're just going to pick up where we left off. 
and I'll deal with these little threads. Pull out a few here. I'm a little stymied how I can have two threads in one place and one thread in another place. The reason I quit, I change to this is because I didn't want my seam ripper breaking my threads. But there, okay, got it. I was going to say, I don't know why I've got an extra thread. All righty. That will be long enough for me to work with. So I'm going to bring that thread up right in that spot. And this is what you need to do is I need to measure right there my quarter of an inch. And it's up against the template there, and it's up against that there. I'm going to keep those threads out of the way. Now I got to get my bobbin thread up. I'll lay back there just and act nice. All right, we're straight here. We're straight there. Because I'm putting this right in the center of that yellow. Back to the center. And then I have one more over here to do. I'll need to tie those threads off, but I'll do that later. And so this one I'm lining up right there and right back in the back. And since there's so much here, I'm just gonna cut it. So I did a little bit of stitching and then I just cut it. So then all I'll have to deal with is this spot right here and those threads are long enough. So what I'm gonna show you next is I am going to show you how I worked with what's called the continuous border loop. Trying to put these back so I can have some control. The continuous border loop that I'm using tonight. Yeah. is this one right here. Now, I don't know, Megan, what happened to my iPad, but we're going to show you how to find this template, okay? We've put a link on there, but I want to show you on the other iPad how to do this because this is a great template, and it has brothers and sisters that are great templates too. 
that come in this set called Continuous Border Small Template Set, okay? Now you can get them individually. The one I'm using tonight is the Continuous Border Loop. that is called the loop two, width is three inches and the height is three inches, okay? So now if I go to, the iPad here to show you, I'm gonna put in the search bar, continuous, border loop and the number two and I'm going to hit the search button now when it comes up this is what I'm looking for right here I don't think what I'm seeing is what I'm looking for Okay, so I'm going to put back up in here, if I can, if it will let me do this. Three by three. Three X three. And see if that helps with the search. So this is what you are, you know, and I know some of you have even made comment that this is really, really frustrating. And so I wanted to show you how, okay, what do you want to know, Megan? I want to think the link I gave is, is working, is working. Correct. So. I understand that, but I want to get here so I can show them how to look for those. So do you know how to get, how can I get there? Let me see the iPad real quick. Because in the in the um, order spot, when you go there, you'll notice that instead of the word loop, it says length to. It doesn't say loop to. So these are the links that I dropped. This one here is what you're looking for, right? Right. When I click on that, it'll come up. Okay. So this is going to come up here and you're going to click choose an option. And this word length is not, doesn't make any sense. It's actually loop to, and then it's the numbers. So if I come down here to continuous border length to, that should say loop to. So now when I press on that three by three and I drop down, and I choose, let's say we just choose high shank, it's now gonna show you, slowly but surely, this particular, there it is right there. So when you see that length to, that word should say loop to. And that's what I wanted to show you because it's very confusing, all right? Megan gave you the length that got you right there, but this is the template that I'm going to be using but they still would have to look through because it's going to give them a funky, it's not going to look like that. So like the steps you went through is still what they're going to have to yeah, do. Yeah, you're going to have to do that to get there. Unfortunately, I can't give you that exact link because they're all under one category. Okay, so what we're going to do, you can decide if you want to just get one template or you want to get that whole set. I want to make sure that my thread is underneath here. And I am going to find the middle of my border in this case. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So this has eight on this side. This is my middle. Megan, you're going to need to adjust this for them.
And what I'm going to be doing with this I've got to see where I've already done it so I know exactly how to match this up. Okay, so I've matched this up with the bottom of my template here. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna be pulling this thread up here. And I've got the two little circle-like stop points down here at the bottom. This is one of those borders that looks so hard it is so fast and easy take advantage of that okay take advantage of that well where's that bobbin thread one to go Let's just pull this out and try again because I've already. So I'm lining it up again, lining up the bottom edge here. We'll give this a try again. The whole time my quilt's still been on that suspension system. We changed it that one time, so we've had a different position. How wide is your border? These started out as five inch squares. We're going around and we stop. There's only, it's going to make you stop. I mean, there's nowhere else you can go. We're going to lift this up and bring it over to here. Now I'm going to get these threads out of the way. We're going to line this up again. I'm lining it up with this edge here. Pull it down, line it up. Line it up with the bottom. If that line up at the bottom doesn't work for you, draw a line wherever you feel like you want it. Make sure everything is laying good and flat. Flatten her out again over here. We're coming close to the corner. And that sat, if you get the sat, I can't remember if there's five or six templates in there. They're all different types and sizes of the loops. And the thing that I will tell you is, you don't have to do just this particular loop. You could do this loop and then do a smaller, lower loop if you wanted to. You can mix them up. But again, I would draw that out. Jennifer, 
people would like to know, while using your suspension system, do you still use the rear view mirror? No, it gets in the way. I don't need any extra problems with that. So here's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to come to this point right there. And I'm going to first of all look to see what I did on my other corner. Yeah. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the whole template and I'm going to line, I'm going to actually draw this so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to line my template up with that corner and this corner down here because I need that to be able to get this corner exactly like I want it. So then I'm going to line this top up and I may need to move my tape a little bit just so that I can see that because it's underneath there. There's my line. So I'm going to line it up top and bottom, put my tape back down and I'm going to stitch this one part twice. Actually, two parts because I'll need to come back up to right here where it's in the ditch because that's where I, I stopped this other one. So I've got a little bit to go right there. Okay. I will come back later and fix this out. So this makes a loop and that makes a loop. Now, yes, I could do it right now and I might as well so, to show you what I'm going to be doing later. So I'm taking this. And I'm putting this base right here, right like that. Okay, I gotta see here. So that this base is a quarter of an inch, right there's a quarter of an inch. And this is up here. Now see if I go farther, this moves away. So all I really need to do is take my quarter of an inch and make sure it's touching there and there. And then I'm going to come down here and come back up to here. Now this one, I'd have to come clear back over there. I just like to do it later. It just makes it easier. So I'm going to turn the corner now. And at this point, notice over here, I don't have anything in this area. So there's not going to be anything. Got a thread stuck here. There's not going to be anything in this area either. I'm just simply going to take this and put it on the bottom here so that it's lined up. Don't make this harder than it is. And then when I come over here, make sure I'm not catching my back border. You know what, guys? I caught it for two or three stitches. I have done everything tonight. Every single thing in the book. But I guess that gives you all a little bit of experience, huh? I'm glad I caught that before going any farther. It just felt a little funny. Is this is easy enough because I'm in the dark orange? And a busy one, I could do this. Nothing needs to be to the point where it gets you so frustrated, other than the fact that sometimes it's just time to quit for a while. But we're not quitting, we're going to get this done. I'm not going to do the whole thing tonight, no, but so I'm going to come right back down here where that is, put that needle in place and pull up my bobbin thread. I guess it would help to pull the right thread. There we go. 
and then come back down and line everything up. All right. So now we were right here. So all I need to do is make sure that I'm lined up down here and this is all straight, which it is. And I'm gonna come right back down to this spot. Move it over. So I'm done for tonight. <laughs> I don't know what more can go wrong with this, but it just seems that it's just had it. So let me just turn this around so you can see what it would look like. So this is a life lesson. This is a life lesson. Sometimes when it gives you lemon, you just need to leave. <laughs> so I don't know so much about... I don't feel like I've got lemons, but I think I know what she means. So I'm just going to show you the corner that's finished and what it looks like. So you can see here how I've turned this corner. This is one that's going to come back up and this is going to come back up there. So I will have that. And then what the way I plan to finish my quilt is that, and you probably can't even see, there is actually one there, but it just blends in so well you can't see it. I will be cutting my batting off even with the edge, and then I will use my tool, the Quick Easy Miter Binding Tool. I'll measure out an inch and three-fourths, and then it's going to get, it, it will be cut to that. Backing will be even here. This will be an inch and a half wider. I'm just going to kind of make it so that you can see what it's going to look like and that will turn around and it will come right down below this one here so it will fill in that there it won't be this wide because it's only going to be three quarters about like that so that's the way i'll finish it off hopefully next week i can show you this finished i don't know i've got a lot on my schedule this week so sorry i didn't get to finish that one over there but uh Machines obviously wanting some attention, so and we're going to give it to them. them the back. Yes, I can show you the back because I've pulled it all off of the clamps. There's threads that need to be cut on the back, which I haven't done yet. But here's some of the designs. Here's that one that was the curly cues that I added the ovals to. This is the space that I haven't done yet, so we need to come back over here. This is one I did the other day where I used my spin effects and then I actually echoed it. And it is echoed all the way around, even though that looks like it's not. And then here's my border. This is a really good way to see the border. So you can see how that's working around there and how I actually was able to turn that. This is another design that I did the other day. This one you're familiar with because this is from the sampler set. So I think that's pretty much everything. This is the one that I did with the Spinifex 15 and then actually went back with a four inch arc and finished around there. So I do apologize for my uh, whatever problems that we had, but hopefully you learned something through that. And uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to let us know. Anything I need to answer before we close, Megan? Nope. All right, thanks everyone for joining us and We'll see you next week. Bye now.